the five steps to build your organic content strategy. It's interesting. Lately, I've been encouraging people to think about it a lot more away from thought leadership and a lot closer to community or content driven community. The reason is because community implies that it's not just pushing out information. Community implies that you need to engage, that you need to understand them, that you need to deliver value, that people are coming out on a recurring basis and consuming the content or attending the events and things like that, which are just see people that are focused on their thought leadership offering, typically kind of brush across in the corner. So trying to pair the community elements that clearly work and people clearly want with a content first approach, I think is a really interesting approach to community. So step one and where I always start with people is the team. Do you have the people to get this done? This is the first thing that we went through. The things that we're looking for are four people in order to get this done. It's four people, but it's really four skill sets. It doesn't need to be four people, but you need to have four core skill sets. Number one, subject matter expert. This is a missing piece on a lot of teams that want to get their thought leadership off the ground. You're not going to have leading thoughts that, that your buyers care about if you don't have a subject matter expert on your content team. You need that to happen. You can use guests and you can interview thought leaders for a while, but after a while, it's going to be very hard to keep up with that scheduling and that thing to get going. And you're going to run out of guests and things like that. You need to have control over your own destiny, so to speak. You need to have that resource in house. Resource number two is the architect, the person that can build all of the frameworks and can put all the pieces together to make it happen. We need to have this event here, which is going to turn into content for this channel. And then we're going to repackage it and distribute it here. And then we're going to run ads here. Most likely not the subject matter expert that's going to be able to understand how to put that framework together about creation, post-production and distribution. Number three is the distributor. How are you going to get the content from the content to your buyers in a way that they consume? And number four is the creative, or you can think about this as the person that's going to package the message in a way that's ready for distribution. So it could be post-production and things like that, that move into distribution. Step one is the team inside of the team. There's four people that would be subject matter, expert, architect, creative distributor. Step two in the five step framework to build your organic content strategy. What is your point of view? Could be said another way. What is your strategy? And so starting with top level business goals and working down to align with what your buyers care about to develop a point of view. One thing that I mentioned to the CMO and I mentioned to everyone here, you don't need to have all this figured out when you get started. To say that we had this figured out when we started our content strategy, is just would be lying to you. Cool, yeah, this is, uh, this is my first time doing this, so we're gonna figure it out together. Right, we didn't have it all figured out. You learn over time, especially as you get an audience to participate, challenge you with questions, to dig deeper into what is actually the root, how do I explain this, why? Having an idea of the company strategy is probably critical before you get started, but actually having like a deck that's perfectly mapped out with your point of view, I don't think is necessary, but over time for this to really work, you need to have a solid point of view that aligns to business goals that your buyers care about, both those things. Step three is the content creation framework. This is where a lot of people miss. This is where a lot of people fall fall down because they're used to the, we're gonna do one webinar and then we're gonna do it eight weeks from now so we have enough time to promote it so we can get a lot of leads. And then once we're done, we'll send it out in a follow-up email and then we'll be too busy with other things to think about how we can chop it up or use that content in a different way. And so they just, for whatever reason, can't get the wheels turning to be able to produce content at a volume and a level that is necessary for this to be successful. If we posted one podcast a month, I hope that you would still listen to it, but it definitely wouldn't have as much impact. It wouldn't be able to fuel LinkedIn. It wouldn't be able to fuel YouTube. We wouldn't have this, we'd have this event once a month instead of once a week. There's just a lot of nuances inside of the creation framework to work. So here is a trick. You need to have pillars in the ground that essentially are a forcing function to you actually creating the content on a recurring basis. A good example is what we're doing right now. Demand Gen Live, I got to show up every Tuesday evening at 7.30. I know that, you know, 70, 80, 100 or more of you are going to be here. So I'm not just going to like, oh, I'll just cancel it last minute. And no, we won't do that. It creates accountability to be here and create the content. So you need something like that inside of your marketing department. I think that minimum, you need to have this happen at least twice a month at minimum. And you should work up to be able to figure out how to do this once a week. If you did it once a week, you basically have four top level pieces of long form content 
per month that you could then repackage and distribute. It also, having a recurring pillar that's a live event, forces you to create content that's good enough, that delivers enough value to have people keep coming back. Really great way to know whether people like your content. Put on a live event and see how many people come back next time. Measure repeat attendees. How many people come 10 times? Just don't see a lot of people measuring that have webinars or events to think about those things. Those are the metrics that matter. We have the demand gen live pillar that we do once a week. We have uh, one on Thursdays at noon, which is backed by popular demand and request from EMEA in the UK. So we have that one twice a month. We have people that ad hoc will have live consulting sessions with me. We'll have people that will have me as guests on podcasts. We have people on our podcast as guests. All of those things get put together. So we have three or four, actually it's probably five or six total vehicles to create content that will fuel the podcast and other channels. Step four is the post-production framework. This one is being able to take the, whatever we're gonna produce tonight, 96 minute video and audio, and be able to post-produce that so that you have audio for a podcast, so that you have long form video that could go on YouTube or your website or both, and that you can create little clips that you can put on LinkedIn or other social networks, a huge, huge important part of this. And something that I think that people that outsource this function don't value enough is the, the most important part of this is having someone that can look through the clips and be like, that's a good one. I wanna start here and I wanna stop there and I'm gonna put this as the title. It either creates a lot more legwork for you to outsource it with people that don't have an understanding of your buyer so they're just picking clips and so that you can just have someone that knows your buyer and the content to do it. The post-production one's actually quite, quite straightforward if you're looking at like podcasts, YouTube, LinkedIn. As you start to expand out into other channels, it, it becomes a little bit more challenging. But And then step five, another one where I would say it's not the biggest miss because the content creation framework probably is, but step five would be the distribution framework. And so you've spent all of this time to build the team, to put together the strategy, to figure out how to create it, to figure out how to post-produce it. And now you got to make sure that people it's distributed so people actually see it so that when people see it, they actually watch it. Being able to actually get it out to people using a, nav a bunch of channels, right? So examples, we have micro content that goes on LinkedIn, but we've discovered that if you put the link to the podcast in the first comment of the LinkedIn video, that we're getting user acquisition of the podcast. And it was one of the main ways that we got the wheels turning before word of mouth of the podcast kicked in and the search rankings. And so just little things like that, that you discover that get you five more, five more listeners to the podcast every time you put post on LinkedIn or something like that. And I had the five steps to build this, but I think there's a sixth one, which is really gathering audience feedback and adjusting in real time and being agile. I'll figure out a nicer way to say that. So we'll have a nice clean list of six, but that's really what it is. We do, we do this show live. I'm sorry. We need a place where after you distribute it, just like what I did three minutes before I came on this episode, I looked at the comments of a comment that I left on somebody else's post because the comment that I left got 126 likes so far and there was 26 comments of people going back and forth and debating things. And I wanna know what people are debating. It gives me insights. It gives me insights what people are saying about my, my thoughts and my comments because I know those things and I know what people have as objections or pushback to my thoughts. I'm going to address some of the objections that came up in those comments. And because they're objections that real people said today about my stuff and then I come on and talk about it 30 minutes later, it's highly relevant to people, which allows the content to continue to fuel, be relevant and, and be things that people want.